All right, welcome once again to another uh, Gray Pages, and we're actually in person today. Uh, we're all gathered here in Tampa. So where are we looking? What we're, we're looking here? Are we just, just looking talking at to each, each other? other? Yeah, just talking to each other, <laughs> man. Yeah, no screens. Natural, yeah, no screens. We got our buddy Joel with us. Um, we're uh, well. Let's just jump in. I know Taylor. What what's up? What are we doing here? Well, I mean, first we're all here in Tampa, Florida at uh, an event we're kind of working out some ideas and fleshing out some some uh some dreams together uh kind of a round table workshop but uh joel repic is here joel's a friend from aliquippa pennsylvania which i'll let, let him tell you all about that but i want to kind of lay the groundwork for the conversation um so we're we're in a moment where we are trying to formulate uh, ideas of church planting, entrepreneurialism, uh, innovation, community development, all these things, all kind of summed up in this microchurch conversation. And I keep I keep uh, ending up in this thought of do we want to do music or math? And I'll tell you where this came from. So I've been a, a, a bit immersed in a story of a guy named Abe Partridge. Uh, he has a podcast called Alabama Astronaut. So uh, props to Abe. Um, in this podcast, the premise of it is Abe has kind of developed a deep love for undiscovered music or what he would call, what, what anybody would call punk rock music. And I think the thing about punk, we can all talk about like our perceptions of punk, but essentially the thing about punk or the essence of punk is um, the art of spontaneity, the art of expression without control or without, uh, help me out, the art of expression without uh, guidelines. Pure, pure creativity. Pure creativity. So I want to read something. This is straight from the mouth of Abe, or at least at least my uh, summary of it. And then I want to talk about it. In one of the episodes, Abe's talking about undiscovered music, and he says, this is what Abe says. I want to get in like the, the Abe zone. Abe says in his beautiful southern accent, he says, it's different, man. It's authentic, but in a way you can't describe. It's music before people came and messed it up. It's music without everyone trying to make it math. Almost everyone in the music industry tries to take art and turn it into math. But music is all about the heart. It's all about putting up your antenna and going where the spirit leads. That's pure art. That's sacred. So as I'm sitting in these moments, I'm about to transition to you, Joel, because I want you to tell your story and then I want you to try to feed this conversation. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Um, this is the question that I'm asking right now. I feel like uh, we have artists and musicians that create, and they play these songs, and they paint these paintings, and they're so beautiful, and people want to be able to reproduce that song and that painting. And so what we do is then we gather, and we, we write the sheet music of the song, and we, we uh, map out the paint by number, of the mm -hmm. of the work of art so that what we would say is it can be reproduced or it can be mass reproduced is there a problem in that and sold because even the idea of pop music <laughs> well, is that, they figure out formulas that you can that's, sell that's right? the formalizing yeah. of it right yeah. so we 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 turn it into math and then we sell it and so when i'm in these moments i find myself almost dying inside a little bit of like what are we doing like are, so how do, do we, the question I'm asking, and I don't even know how to transition, so you're going to have to do the work. <laughs> but the question I'm asking is, do we want to reproduce art and math? I'm sorry, art and music, uh, punk, expression, underground hip hop, uh, you know, um, uh, spont spontaneous songwriting and creativity, or do we want to take that expression formulize it and then hand it over so that it can just be mass produced mass in an assembly line 
So I've been thinking this thought. I'm sitting with three guys that I consider to be um, gifted artists in creativity and in the, the, the exposing and, and uncovering of the kingdom. I just spent some time in Aliquippa with Joel seeing what's going on. So I want you to tell your story and yeah. see how it can feed into this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so some of our story real quick is I'll start when I was in college in Georgia. So I'm originally from Pennsylvania, from Aliquippa, that old steel town outside of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, but my great-grandparents, grandparents worked in the steel mill, so my, my roots are in that you know, community. Um, and I went to college in the South in Georgia, um, was preparing for ministry in my denomination, all that. And uh, I would say there with some friends, just a, a restlessness, a discontent started to form in our hearts. I don't always start the story here, but I want to mention it for our purposes here. Um, that you know, one of the voices for me in that season was Alistair McIntyre, so the Catholic, um, you know, philosopher. Um, and you know, there's this call for a new Saint, Saint Benedict, you know, for an integrated life at the margins of empire, um, you know, uh, with the poor, you know. So the, the seeds of that vision were certainly in our hearts, but then I started. I worked for a community development organization in Pittsburgh for two summers when I was in college. And um, those summers, I would drive down the Ohio River from from Pittsburgh, you know, alongside the Ohio River back to Aliquippa. And, um, and I had some good mentors there. And the thought was maybe, you know, me and some of my friends from college could start something, you know, in this community. So long story short, we started a summer day camp program in a public housing community. So that would have been in 2005. Um, raised a little bit of money, you know, to pull that off and did an initial, you know, 10 week kind of thing. Um, did it a second summer that was coinciding with my college graduation, realized our relationships were going deep, you know, with the community. My wife and I got married and we moved into um, an Episcopalian Benedictine community, actually. So I discovered this group, and that's kind of a whole story in of itself. They had a roots in the Jesus movement and the charismatic movement in the Episcopal Church that had embraced this Benedictine way of life. And um, uh, so we moved in with them onto a drug and prostitution corner in the city. Um, you know, a lot of activity in front of our house and stuff. And, um, and College students were coming, you know, to help us pull off this little program, you know, during the summer. And uh, there was a real movement of prayer that happened among us in those early years. It's, it's still going on, you know, in our community. It's still a big part of our story. Um, but that prayer was really just birthed out of this desperation, you know. I think I think for a few things, like number one, just our total, our total inability to make any difference in this community at all you know like we're just surrounded by need you know my wife and i had a homeless teenager living with us almost immediately just weighing over our heads you know and um had, had no idea how to how to be helpful um also especially in those early years we really didn't have money and so um we just had to learn to be neighbors yeah. you know just that grinding that was, that's right but that was a position of listening right of weakness of just you know being present and walking around our neighborhoods and getting to know people um you know listening to their stories trying to understand the neighborhoods you know that we found ourselves in um but to our surprise many of these college students after they graduated from college they would move into the community with us and that was something that we never really planned you know yeah um but this community you know, formed, you know, people who were praying and we, we couldn't pay anyone just to be clear. Like that was not part of this. And so, uh, they would just find jobs, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the community and kind of learn this way of life or we were learning it together, you know, and, and in those early years we were just existing in this, in this rhythm of prayer together. I think part of the grief in our hearts was that it felt like there was so much distance between our Bibles and our experience of the church, you know, um, mm. and uh, that grief probably fueled a lot of our praying, you know, for what By the way, uh, your little quote, was it you or somebody else that 
reference that we've also made the Bible math instead of letting it remain that that musical yeah piece. yeah that's right that's right yeah and that's that's a really great metaphor for how we were experiencing the bible because yeah the, it, it was like the grief was there's there's some kind of story here there's some kind of power in this story that even though we know the story you know, I mean, many of us have roots in the church. It that's not what we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think we actually knew the math. Yeah. You know, but it was not translating. Mm -hmm. You know, into into our experience. So anyway, that uh, summer day camp program eventually became a youth development organization um, that kept serving kids in the city. So we're in one of the poorest communities in the state of Pennsylvania. So when our steel mill closed, we lost like two thirds of our population. Um, and uh, when was that? It closed in 1984, I think, and the city declared bankruptcy the year following. So, mm -hmm. um, the mill had really built our town. Also, mm -hmm. all of our homes were built by the mill, and there were huge inequalities. Not metaphorically, they, literally, literally, they built the. Homes. Yeah, it was a utopian vision. Yeah. They were trying to avoid unionization. The company town. Yeah, and yeah. so so, so Ebor was built. Yeah, so they were trying to. Um, demonstrate what yeah. industry could do, as particularly for immigrants. But you know, th these were this was in the years of the African American migration, you know, from the South to Northern industrial cities. And uh, yeah, I have a, a friend, a sociology professor, who went back through the Mills records and and just uh, you know proved that African Americans were not getting promoted mm -hmm. in right. the mill or represented by the union in the yeah. same way. So when the mill closed, the people who could leave did, and there were a lot of people who couldn't, you know, and, and that's, you know, who was left. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, we started running after school programs, and um, that organization is still in existence. There's still college students coming every summer, still recently graduated college students moving, you know, into the area, you know, every year. It's still right. part of our story. Um, but in those early years, too, I should mention this, I got hired as the youth pastor at, at the historic church I had grown up in. It's a 100-plus-year-old church. My great-grandparents were part of that church. Uh, categorically not a cool place, you know? <laughs> I mean, mustard yellow pews, you know? And, um, yeah, objectively lame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And... Um, uh, and there were no youth in the church. So I got hired as a youth pastor very part-time. My wife is a therapist, so she was working in a Incredibly easy job. <laughs> yeah, right. So we would just we would just gather teens in our house on this corner to pack out, you know, with, with teenagers that we were getting to know from the community. Um, uh, but that church's story got wrapped up in our story for sure. Love it. Um, and it's still part of our story, you know, to this day. But honestly... We didn't set out, none of this had anything to do with setting out to renew or revive that church. I, I'll be honest with you, for years, I didn't even think that was possible. Um, Did you set out to renew and revive the community? Was that ever on the radar? Or? <laughs> well, I, th I think we probably did, but if I could say something that one of my mentors, I was sharing this with Taylor earlier, pointed out, there's a guy in my life who's like done urban ministry for like, 40 years, like started health clinics, and did transitional housing for the homeless and started NA groups and all this stuff. And one time I asked him, I was like, how have you done it for so long? You know, this was early on in my ministry because I was already, I, I was burning out pretty bad just a couple years in probably because I was really trying hard to do what you just said, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and I asked him, I was like, how, how are you still here? Doing this, you know, like, like I've watched so many people give up, or they should give up because they kind of hate people now, or um, they just kind of go down in flames, you know. So how have you kept doing it? And he said, well, two things. He was like, I'll never forget this, but he was like, number one, um, he said, I just take Jesus at His word that He's He identifies with the poor so strongly that that's actually like that's where He's at, you know. And I need Jesus. So he was like, so you got to flip this, you know, and and recognize that you need him 
And so actually you need these people yes, in your yeah. life, you know, yes. they don't need you. Like, exactly. This is actually how you're going to encounter Jesus. And his second answer was, he was like, also give up on trying to fix your city. He was like, the, the sooner you do that, <laughs> you know, he was like, he was like, your job is just to love people. That's enjoy it. The, enjoy the ride. That's right. And, and enjoy the poor, which I don't think we ever get to enjoy them. And I'm not romanticizing them at all. I've, I've been, yeah. you know, I've, I've experienced right. it all. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, we don't really enjoy. Right. Like, just like not community. trying to fix. Yes. You know, then you just enjoy the people. That's right. And you know what's crazy? That had to be our attitude for that legacy church too. Um, like, you know, this the traditional this, brick and mortar. Yeah, deal. this yeah. this church that got started in the steel town, all oh, of that. That's a good word, all that. For yeah. them, for them to like not, because they were poor in their own way, right? And for them not to constantly seem like a burden to me. Yeah, th- there had to be a similar kind of release. Mm-hmm. Like I actually. Like for me to be part of that church in a healthy way, which I, I ended up being, you know, for over a decade, it had to be like, I actually don't need to extract anything from you, you know, like, um, that's a, that's the only way for us to be in relation. Like if I feel like I have to extract something from you, even if it's like supporting my mission or something, yeah, then I'm gonna try to manipulate you, and that's not love. You know? Let me ask you a question though, because I heard that differently, and then you use the word extract, but like. What I was hearing and, and what seemed to resonate with me is like, you know, uh, is the nothing to fix. Mm-hmm. So like for me, like that's that that might be easy with addicts and the poor for me. Mm-hmm. Right. To go, these are my friends and neighbors and mentors. I like where you're going. But then I go into the church and I'm like, I got to fix this. <laughs> not OK. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. like it's actually a really hard place to have relationship. Like as this is what I thought you were. But yeah. that's kind of it. Like, it's not just, yes. there's nothing to extract, but it's almost like, I mean, I even, I even, you were asking about where we're at here and I don't want to say a ton about that, but like, yeah, I'm pretty much part of this. This is a small little yeah. church congregation. Sure. We're, we're in an office uh, that I use in this church building and I go here and participate in whatever. Um, but I do often think like of, of something like progress in this place or with this community, probably in a way that's actually sure. an outlier from my other relationships. Like I have expectations, which sure, you know, 12 step programs until you're just premeditated resentment. Yeah. Right. If, right, if right. you could get this moment out and understandable, this actually would fix so much of our miseries. Yeah. So look, think, <laughs> think about it like this. Right? So we, we talk a lot about the powers uh, the governing powers over Babylon, over yeah. like the the world system, yeah. and then the the dichotomy that exists between the kingdom city that we want to see here. So, do y'all know much of the history of Constantine and Ecclesia and Kerche, how he changed the word and how all that shifted? I and think and I think it was just the whole Kerche thing. Yeah. yeah so for a church, for a, it's for a, a circle, it's a new like it's a, it's a new word for church. Keep, yeah. keep going because I don't I know this in. Well, I'm gonna Swiss cheese version. I'm gonna fumble around yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. but I think it's important yeah. right here, and I it I think we can draw a straight line into this this idea. So we used to have this idea of church of people, family, mm-hmm. and it was a word called ecclesia. You know, this Greek idea of like people coming together for different reasons. We we've talked in depth about Jesus's brilliance in the meal and as often as you come together remember me and what he was saying was celebrate like celebrate what i'm doing well, there was a shift in the third i think the third century when the the family became an institution and so the people were turned into a building and it would almost be like when i say i'm you know i'm i'm going to family yeah. i would i would be meaning i'm going to my house mm-hmm. whether people are there or not and we use that we use it as if it's a part of our language, even though all four of us fundamentally believe that the church is the people right. on right. mission, we yeah. still use yeah. Kerche. And it's it's really messed us up quite a bit. Because and it is a sociological reality yep. at this point. Yeah. It's a complete sociological reality, and we can't change it. Yeah, We have it, to. We can't. We have to. Right. That's right. <laughs> no, no. No, no, both of those are true. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it one more time, one more time. <laughs> We can't. And we have to. Right. 
And so, hope as protest. This yes. is this. That's right. That's, that's right. Uh, we what, what is what does Cornell say? I'm a prisoner of hope. Yeah. Living yeah. in the eschatological impossibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the beauty of it. You can go into this space. You can go into the kerche, the brick and mortar, knowing that's not what I'm not trying to change. You can't change Babylon. Mm -hmm. We've already covered this. You can't mm -hmm. negotiate with her. We keep trying to make kerche ecclesia. Right. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to liberate the workers and say, mm -hmm. stop. So can I say something about that liberation is that I think can't change it it's a reality especially if you're doing city work you have to acknowledge the sociological reality right like yeah. this church i'm referencing have been part of the social fabric of this community for over 100 right. years you're not gonna get rid of that right however i think part of the liberation is i also don't have to be enslaved by that that's right, right? You, you, you stole or my seed however, sabotage to it you know what <laughs> I mean? like and so over over the years you know we we developed a little phrase, honor what is and go around it. And all we mean ah. is like, and, and, and this is really important for, it's good. this is really important for Western Pennsylvanians because we are, you know, connected to our institutions multi-generationally. That's a Western Pennsylvania thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just our churches. My, you know, my grandmother spoke Croatian. She was the president of the Croatian club, Right. That's a, that's a reality in Alapopa, the Croatian club, <laughs> you know, like it's just a thing, you know, like it, you know, and you can't, you can't be perceived as, as disrespecting it. It would be bad. It would be bad missiology. You know yep. what I mean? To Honor do and go around it. Yep. Yeah. Honor, Honor what is and go around it. However, so, the world is so much bigger. You so know, I, know so I, love, working. I love that you're doing this. However, I was about to go there uh, with John with Tampa. So, can you change Tampa? As it is. I, I don't think I can change anything but me. Well, give me the like, simple I, I like, give know, me the like, simple answer. Can, no. But can you build can you uncover and establish a kingdom city in Tampa? We'll see. Yes, I can work toward that end. Yeah, you can work towards it. <laughs> I guess the 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 moment we're in in this conversation that I think is important is this thing that is a Un, it feels like it's an unmovable mountain in our society, in our culture. This kerche, this uh, church as we know it. Is it a futile effort to keep trying to change it? I'm arguing it, it is. So you can't create out of kerche. You can't. You can't but put you, new but, wine into... But you can build... Wine. You built Ecclesia inside. Not even inside. It was it, For <laughs> us, it was dual. It was build it out there. Yeah but in proximity mm, to, yeah. and, and then there's so much we're out of control of with that. So just to say something about the youth development organization we started was kind of the beginning of our network. It was interesting at, at the beginning, and th this is probably just what I intuited as a Western Pennsylvanian, you know, um, I went to the elders of the church and asked for their blessing. Right. Um, and that was important to me for some reason. It was the honor what is piece, you know, like I wanted that. Did I really think that they, you know, had the authority on if it's okay to reach kids in the public housing community or serve them? No. You know what I mean? But there was something about institutional honor. And, and you realize I'm a son of this institution, right? So I'll, I'll, there's a bunch of contextual things here that don't, oh, that's good. don't translate into math. You know what I mean? But, but did that however i didn't want their money um yeah, I because i just knew what would i'd be beholden them mm -hmm. to certain things you know so i was like i'll find the money but you knew <laughs> you know you knew you would have to stop playing music yeah and i feel yeah. tell me if i'm putting words in your story but i feel like in 2004 five yeah you moved to aliquippa or back or whatever to just start playing music to start yeah producing art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what we're looking for are the artists and the musicians what i'm what i'm wondering is everything you did was a fresh song was just out of it was out of the what do you call it like 
it was out of the expression of the moment. Like it came out of the woods, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's the mystical. Yeah. You've moved in as a mystic, but an artist, a, a, a musician. Now, as you tell your story more and more, here's, here's what I see people doing. They go, okay, what'd you do? Yeah, right. You went in and, uh, okay, uh, Ask elders. Yeah. Right. yeah, no, that's right. right, right. Then what? Okay, <laughs> fine. When did you start your uh, well, your, your daycare, your your uh, your your after school program? Yeah, year yeah. two. Uh, yeah. Year two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like okay, yeah, now okay. Then we take this and we go put it on a an assembly line, and we mass produce it as a booklet. Yeah, uh, fresh church print planting by Joel Repick, <laughs> and then we sell it. And now it's math, and we wonder why God moved. Yeah. We wonder when I say moved, I don't mean in the beautiful way. We wonder why He He pivoted. We wonder why Ichabod comes, like the glory has departed over the song, and it's still like the masses love the the uh, two verse chorus verse bridge, but that math. Musicians don't love that, or artists don't love that. Have you ever even noticed? I, I'll, I'll give one more example. How you can go to a live show of an artist, and when he kind of shifts things up, the artists love it, but the masses are like, "No, I want you to sing it the way you always sing it." I, the perfect example for me is Counting Crows. I'm a Counting Crows fan. If you've ever been to a Counting Crows show, it's wild because they change all their melodies, and it's quite like. Uh, <laughs> disorienting because yeah. you know these songs so well and he's singing different melodies mm -hmm. but the artist in you is like i'm digging this man mm -hmm. it's a whole new expression of this moment in your life mm -hmm. when you wrote this but i'm telling you i've been to two or three everybody hates it they're like will you just sing mr jones the way you wrote <laughs> it so i can sing along <laughs> now i feel like we need to understand at least begin the conversation of like is this good? Is it good to take a punk rock song, formulize it, and then give it as a as paint by number or as sheet music? What you, know, you see what I'm well, saying? Well, rather than is it good, the question might be is it punk? Like, <laughs> right? Well, that's an easy no, no. Correct. So it's like it it was punk, and now it's not punk. And then we and now I just wonder to map that over to faith. Is it Christian? Is it? <laughs> you just have to go to the dark side. <laughs> is it? No, but I'm just saying, like, I'm like, look, it's the same question. It's like, th this Will story was beautiful. <laughs> no, but this story, it's like, this is the thing. It's like, there is this organic <laughs> kind of faith, mystic, punk rock, however you want to frame that. And if you replicate that, which, by the way, I hear, are we hearing that you're, the, the Brave Cities book isn't going to give us the steps to build a brave nah, city what no, are we no steps. guys what are, what are we buying here what are we doing yeah that's why it's what are we even talking about? <laughs> did jesus teach us art or did he teach us math and i i think there's reason to say now like when he said go and teach them all the things that i taught you he's saying go and teach them to be artists huh. Because everything that I can't, everything that I did was what my father in heaven told me to do, and that's how I taught you to live. I, I, yeah. There's some cool stories of me like saying, "Hey, when you go into a city, here's a really cool strategy: work towards peace. Peace matters. If you're going to try to cast out demons, you need to build peace first." There's some cool stories like that, but I think he's giving us terms of how to be great artists, not math of how to reproduce. Um, you know, something really interesting you just reminded me of. So, uh, I'm, I, I, Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, has a, wrote a book called Ethics, and he's trying to figure out, have you guys read it? Mm -hmm. He's trying to figure out how to, how, how to do ethics, right? And it's, it's a great book, but like, he kind of opens up the book talking about the Pharisees. And it's kind of like, hey, the Pharisees get a bad rap, but like, they're I'm really out here real. trying, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, and in the end, and, you know, Jesus had some some words with him, right? And, like, Jesus is teaching. So this this actually works perfectly with this math and music. Like, what was the th what was the mistake that they made? And he's like, they actually tried to think through every scenario. So, like, what yeah. is it? What What is, what qualifies as work yeah. on the Sabbath? And then they, or, 
Or if I'm walking down the street and I see a, a beautiful woman, like what is the, so it's like they want to al- create an algorithm and imagine every possible scenario and answer the question of the right move to make and then the into an algorithm. Yeah. And then Jesus is like, you're, mi- you're missing everything. You're missing the entire point. Of all of that, you don't need the right. Thing. You, you yeah. missed it completely, and so That's and so. What what what, what Bonhoeffer then says is, here's how ethics are done. You have to take the the DNA, right? You live as best you can figure out how to do in real time, in full view mm-hmm. of Lord. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're playing for an audience of one. God's watching. Who's speaking? Yeah. There is no prescription. Mm-hmm. I can describe what you do after the fact, but I cannot tell you what to do right now in this moment. You have to, you have to have courage and you have to act in faith. I was thinking about all this this morning, even before we decide what we'd talk about, but I was thinking like, is it like a puzzle? I've prepared good works in advance for you to have cut out the pieces, throws it on the table. And then we create what he's already created. I don't know. That's a, that's a, bigger question or are do we even ever surprise him like is everything thought up ahead of time that's that's a whole but hey that real quick <laughs> quick practical thing though because i think there are some people that we got to stop for a second and go so far three things we should not ever do with the existing church uh so tell me if i'm wrong let's try to change it right yeah shouldn't make fun of it anymore i'm sorry <laughs> which is what we all do right so Possibly. we would never make fun of i literally just came from doing that we wouldn't make fun of the poor <laughs> that are around us right because we're trying to just enjoy them and in my community you wouldn't make fun of the croatian club yeah. you know yeah, what i mean totally, like to yeah. draw a parallel so, so i think we have to stop yeah. we have to stop great. going into ecclesial spaces and going Psh, we gotta quit rolling our eyes at it we gotta i love what you said <laughs> yeah it's good don't try to change it don't make fun of it um honor it enjoy it enjoy the old folks yeah, and then go around it. It just to, to me, it's so releasing. It's good, it is. It is. And but don't even waste an, a, a moment of energy being ticked. Like use your energy to create. Go yeah. best critique of the what the old or the bad is the recreation of the new. So just it's, get on. It's to the it. best word possible. It reminds me of Jesus's approach to government and mm-hmm. to politics mm-hmm. and to taxes. Yeah. Well, do you boo? Right. <laughs> but, it's, right. right. That's right. <laughs> but it's so profound because yeah. he knew all the oppressive systems that were being built yeah. from this. So the hard part, especially for the prophet, is to watch right. what's flowing from that perche and to just go, oh, no, don't worry about it. So why but, can't the prophet, instead of always being the critiquer, why can't the prophet be seen back in the creative element, the uh, church hinging upon the apostle and prophet why can't it they work together in creation instead of well so critique I'll just, all the time i'll That's tell right. you my own, my own right. experience though and I, it is like and we have to so it is like well i and i have kind of for the most part our work i think has been well that that has become at the very in best case i'm not like you don't need to shake your fist at this um, although I often, I, I think I'm tempted to because it's so, I get so upset. It wouldn't matter if you just weren't talking about Jesus there, but because you're talking about Jesus there. And I think like the, I get so bothered, right? Because I'm like the, the, the kind of the, what is it, the medium is the message or whatever. Like right. you're the yep. thing that you're actually doing and communicating isn't these words mm-hmm. that you're saying. You just think that's what you're talking about. It's not what's being done here. And I get, it's like, I want, I like fire, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I have to leave because I'm going to go to jail. That per, Like me, John, <laughs> needs to leave because I will be, I'll get an arson charge or something, right? right? So I have to leave. So I want to go over here and I want to build, just build something else. Build kingdom yeah. ecosystem, yeah. build yeah. a business, build a family, build an ecclesia, a, a, a different kind of thing, right? But then like, well, we're here in this church in this Kirche building, you know, that, and I do come to their services and I right. want to love these neighbors and walk right. with these people. And, and actually, you know, I, I recognize that, but that, so both and like to what you're saying, is like, I want to create that thing, 
I guess I'm trying to answer that question. Say why? Like why can't the prophet do that? I'm like, well, I'm I'm really trying to just create rather than critique, and the critique is implied by yeah. the creation. But yes. then I gather with Jesus yes. people, yeah. Yeah. just generally, that are all like uh, in agreement in concert. That it's like, well, we want to build a brick and mortar space and get yeah. butts in seats and get this like whole Christian theater thing all up and running because we this is a business that I feel is a vocational calling, but I'm going to use all the same words. And so I, I actually do have, and I don't know if this is answering that question, but it's like, why can't we be seen that way? It's like, well, I guess for me, it's like, why can't I function that way? Yeah, to me, it's, it's a spirit of the critique or a spirit of, like, I think this goes back to one of the great moments of witness in a city is unity, right? And you can't yeah. have unity when we're always right. critiquing. Right. So you were saying even this morning over breakfast, you know, I, I can't say how you said it, but they, well, we're always looking with our eyes for the formula yeah. instead of using our olfactory nerve to mm -hmm. sniff out the aroma mm -hmm. Yeah. And if there's an aroma in a city of people that are honoring and are, and enjoying yeah. the old guard, then there can actually be unity in that town. If there's everybody pointing the finger going, those suckers can't ever That's fix right. anything. So I'm going to go do my thing. And it's got that arrogant but, kind uh, of bitchy aroma. It's, yeah. you know, there's it's, a tension. Ah. There's a tension in it, though, that I think is worth noting. That, yeah. Come that on. like, like, even when you let go of the critique, Babylon will still kill the apostles and the prophets, right? right? So, mm. so it's like because it is implied. Yeah. It is. It is like where where Babylon exists and however it's manifesting in its religious or pagan forms yeah. or you know whatever. Yeah. Like it will still take a certain posture towards the apostles and the prophets. Now that the art in it, as I think about all this, like as as I retrospectively, you know look back on this like part of our story was that historic church did experience a renewal a, re mm -hmm. a revival of sorts it's it's um it's not what people expect we actually got mm -hmm. rid of most of the church's programs and all, all that kind of stuff it became fervent in prayer a place you know yeah, but, the, but a lot on, of it can on. even happen hold there. on hold on hold on hold on hold on, but, hold on hold on but seriously not semantics did it or did you just uncover the kingdom in that space yeah well but here's how it happened though it happened through the poor though i would say like i would say the renewal happened because some kind of you know because what god was doing you know in the community you know, somehow was allowed to flow, you know, in, into Because you said something that reminds me of Amos 5, which we all know, this, like, moment of, you know, total vitriol from the prophet to the church. You said at some point you felt like you changed religions. Yeah. Yep. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Christianity Christianity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. And Amos says, yeah. you know, he says, I hate, I despise your religious festivals, your assemblies. Woe to you who do all these things. And though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for him. Like, for them. So, like, he's speaking against the kerche, the, the religious ceremony. The, what I'm saying is, the, I still am afraid... We're, we're coming to another conclusion of don't do this rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. do this. What I'm saying is do punk rock. And sometimes punk rock goes into the religious assembly and, and prophesies. Wrecks things. And wrecks things and burns things down. But the reason is not because of a formula. Like, it just became popular in the past 20 years to just start slamming sure, on the church sure, as we know it. Sure. So now I'm like, well, that's not. Right. And even, even in justice work, we all know the feeling. When, like, there's an innovative movement for the poor, and then the early adopters and the late adopters, and now it's like, wait, something's different. This isn't what we were crying for 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's because the art became a formula. Yes. And money got involved. Absolutely. The art became mass producible. Yeah. 
So I guess the the changing religions conversation is important to me because I don't think I think people want to look at your story, and I, I really am potentially projecting my thoughts into your story. So push back. But I think people want to look at your story and say, "See, Joel revived a dying." This church. is my point. This and I don't think point. you did. You can't, you can't. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, and that's not how I feel. It feels like, and this is this is the point I'm making. It feels like we stumbled into something, you know, like, and and here, almost blindly. Yes, because I was I was never we we were never setting out to change the church. We were never setting out to start to start a network. That's even more laughable. So what? You know, here's the, the, church, here's the dying you know? question: What were you doing then? What were you doing? Well, okay. Simply so, put, yeah. I mean, I think love. You know what I mean? Listening like, to the music, right? Like that's right, and and seeing what God was doing, but like. But as I look back on the story, I, and I might not have the right words for this. I, you're, you're right. All the time, people listen to this story. And there are these things. I say, honor what is and go around it. The, there's a temptation for people to want to turn that just into a principle or something. Ah, he's I, a church. Yeah, I would, I would say, huh, yeah. I don't, even now, I was part of this. I don't know how to reproduce it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, and even even just the the little bit I heard mm -hmm. last night and today, you don't even know what you'll look like five years from now because now people are wanting to give things to you. Yeah, they right. they listen to your music and they don't really even like here to have yeah. this. Yeah, I mean. So to me, that's part of the creative thing. It's like we don't have to be the creatives. The yeah. spirit of God's the creative, yeah. and he, you know, he gives us a building in Alton, so we start. Right. Not knowing what we're doing, right. but let's just start fixing the building. And however, just like I actually, I actually do a lot of my like administrative or computer work at the, the Alton Center in Pittsburgh. Like one of the reasons we look at art, you know, like we we look at historic paintings, right? You're right. It, if it's math, it's the most boring thing ever, right? These things are a kind of collective testimony of things, of things in the art they there's a historical aspect to it mm -hmm. but it's not meant to turn into a paint by number the, the question is like what was happening mm -hmm. in the mix of this this artist and this it's the reverent and referential thing we were talking about at the table mm -hmm. it's like there is a kind of reverence towards what god did in a place and yeah, any space and, that's right any space yes even I'm not just the things churches. we call church yes yeah. yes that's right and, and and a kind of reference to it, right? Like, and yet it's it's not the math thing. So this is what I'm saying. When I look at this story, I'm so glad it happened, but we kind of stumbled into it. And also, I might not fully have the language, but it's probably worthy of like more reflection. But I can look back and identify things that feel like art but not math. So for instance, one of those things is gentleness, right? <laughs> like, like, you know the kind of gentleness that says I actually don't have to control you you know and what gentleness means for God like that that this is actually how he works in the world that somehow he subverts Babylon in gentleness like none of that make right we're in the territory now of what I think is the art of mm -hmm. God right yeah. like things that we struggle to find words for it's mystery you know what I mean but it's yeah. real we're experiencing it and we can even identify the the collective testimony of gentleness you know in a place or how god moves so would it. you say nonviolent resistance is gentleness yeah 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 that's that's a exactly. good that's a good exactly. definition and that's a and that's a that's an art you know what yeah, i mean like art. that's art like not an art it's like it it's art See, at its core you know what i mean bro but he taught you can't us turn it yeah, to he taught us know? to be artists yeah and so it is paint by number just like you would with your grandkids do we still do a little paint by number that's what i'm wondering. with the existing to help them in hopes that one or two might become an actual artist. But is that is that Jesus baby stepping us? That's some of my question. The... It's because you said Jesus taught them art. Some of my question in this conversation is what what does that look like? But he you know? always zagged. He always zagged. Mm -hmm. They were always like, Oh, this is what we're doing today, and he was like, I'm going this way now. Yeah. And there's an art. But that's teaching art. I know. And yeah. Teach, and, and you watch him. So you can, yeah. And you go, All right. this is genius. This is right. brilliant. Yeah. Well, I can't do this, right? Which is great because it's constantly like yeah. fueling that like like you look at the artists in the museum. I can't paint like Dolly, right? 
and I don't want to make a dolly painting. I want to have the ability to paint like that, to think like that, to imagine other worlds like that. And that actually is, so you look at, and this is the importance of the stories, isn't to get the algorithms, but to get the inspiration. To go, why do I, why do, why is it important what Bonhoeffer did in Nazi Germany? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, so that I know what to do in Tampa. Yeah. Not because... There's an algorithm. There's an algorithm. Like, <laughs> in the end, he's like, yeah, here's right. how it works. No, it's a song. Do your best right now it's in front song. of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I am a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is pretty common. As am I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to hear you all song. I heard you <laughs> true story. We're co-writing songs now. One of the things you do as a songwriter, and this is common across the board, is when you're looking for inspiration, you go and listen to other songs. Yeah. But it's not... If you copy, come on, like if you copy the song, everybody's like, what are yeah, you doing? Right, bro? Right, I don't right, want to hear this. Right, right. But when yeah, the song, right. like I could even, I could tell, our new song is called Fence Line. I could tell you the yeah. three songs I, I listen to. There's five other songs called Fence Line in the world, so. No, that That's okay. Doesn't matter. You can okay. copy a title. You just can't <laughs> copy a song. <laughs> But then when you, you 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 see the stream, you see the you hear the music, you see the art, you take it in, and then you go, all right. So yeah, I I actually think, I think that the paint by number is not what Jesus wants us to do, and I think when he said go and make disciples, I think he was saying uh, go and teach them to be artists. The artists are going to uncover the city, the kingdom city, in their spaces. The world is going to have access to the to the tables to sit at, to find hope. You can't make the narrow road broad. So there's always gonna be just a few artists. There's always just gonna be small cities. But so what do you tell non-artists that love Jesus? You know, this is interesting. Become so, artists. so, well, okay, but <laughs> Taylor pointed this out about my wife, Erica, and uh, I don't know if you said this on the recording, but like, she came to Tampa so she's from New Hampshire. She came here as for an internship. And she was sniffing out that aroma you were talking about. She and smelled she it. and Erica, like we in terms of like, let's just say builders and entrepreneurs and that kind of like like Erica is never gonna start anything right. except maybe like a recipe for dinner. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like she's not she's not the DNA temperament, she's not gonna right launch something yeah. she's solidly a number two she's a great manager though yeah. but she's not and so she moved here so everybody wants to be that's right a citizen of the kingdom city that's but right. not everyone's gonna lay the bricks that's right yeah. and there are some of us that have to be the builders so that the others can come be the citizens yeah. and together we become the ecclesia you become you know, a band it's a that's band. it it's yeah. like well, and, 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 and everybody goes to the museum to see the artwork or goes to the concert to, to, to sing together or dance together. It's yeah. like, ultimately, the, and, and I, it's actually how I think of the vision of Revelation. Every tongue, tribe, and nations gathered together is like a big dance party. Like, this is the, because they're, because the, because the, because they found harmony. Mm -hmm. With one another. Yeah. I did think, like, in, in the Brave City book, we're trying to figure out, are there some categories of people? And we did we do think there's owners and there's builders, and then we just said there's seekers. Last night I just added, we should probably just say there's seeker dreamers. Because the, the dreamers are the ones that they're being drawn to some creative thing. And they do have, like, thoughts of it. They just don't mm -hmm. know how to actually... Yeah. So we, we might build that for them, and they they get to play in there and have some fun. It's like creating a playing field other people get to at least play on but they're not they're not thinking up the game so to speak but. yeah not fully I, I think the reason the the apostle prophet um some call it like the the inclination some call it the genetic like that office but i think the apostle prophet personality is so important in this is they're the foundation layers but eric is an artist and she wants to sling paint around yeah but she doesn't want to she doesn't want to build a museum or whatever she doesn't want to like be the foundation layer of the city but she moved here to do art that's right that's right 
No, that's right. I I, I was thinking in the in the builder. I was I guess I was equating those right. like find the artist, but at some level you're right. Um, and you know what? We all have some creative way to contribute beauty and value. And and I think that's all. That's literally all. Well, I'm sitting here. I'm thinking about how. Honestly, so many of the beautiful things that we look at, um, just follow this. Like math is involved in those things. Yeah, you know I mean that's right. It's no, it's it's the it's the critique everyone's thinking about of this whole now. Yeah, yeah. It's like we talk about music's not math. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. It's because math matters. Because because. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. but but this is what I think about with that apostolic prophetic thing you were just. Well, talking that's about. Abe's fault if we don't want to use that term. We can no, 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 no. But, no, but I'm good. like it's anyone good. that good. is good. like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it's still. Yeah. <laughs> I think though. I think though that there's, there's ways that that math, speaking of music, be, like plays a role in art or becomes part of art. Or, but by itself, you yeah. know what I mean. Like there's still, and this is what I was thinking about when you were talking about the that that apostolic prophetic role. You know, it's interesting, even the, the, the network or this renewal of this historic church, uh, all these things, you know, like I'm talking about, like sometimes, you know, in conversations about the apostolic, there's a, you know, there's things said about the, st the structural piece, you know, these are the structuralists or whatever. I'll be honest with you, like our network, this, I don't even feel it. Maybe some people are really good at that. I don't feel like I'm some, I've been some whiz with structure or building or like whatever oh, yeah. i'll tell i'll tell you what it is for me and i've been saying this to, to you recently i i think some of the foundation laying you know is actually the cultivation of a certain set of desires yeah right? that's like that then mathematicians can build on in really beautiful ways mm -hmm. you know so for instance for community like i live with these benedictines right who have taken a vow of poverty. I think this is what the monastic communities were. They were communities In, of desire. You're talking about inside the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're communities of desire. Like you know yeah. what I mean? And and they've they're cultivating a certain life of desire. For instance, a desire for the poor, right? It's just one desire, yeah. right? Man, if if the foundation is that, like the city that God is building, right? Welcomes, celebrates, you know. Uh, they get the best seat at the table. You know what I mean? Like all that kind of stuff. Well, then there, there are, there's a ton of stuff to build, a ton of beautiful stuff. No, to you're build, right. You know what I mean? And we do need math, right? Yeah, like yeah. to build those things. I, I just feel like that's not been my role. I, I'm not mm -hmm. like in real life. I suck in math. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's not been my contribution to the world. You know what I mean? But a lot of the building of the things that, you know, came to be in Aliquippa or whatever, they were built, they're actually built by mathematicians. I've actually been surrounded by mathematicians, you know what I mean? But but not in a formulaic way, in this, in an expression of desire, you know? It's like even math can begin to express mm -hmm. something deeper, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So. so we always try to ask this with folks that are kind of sharing their story. We didn't get much of your story drawn out, but um, <laughs> I really appreciate you sharing this. But um People are going to want to find out more about what you guys are doing. Do you want them to find you, first of all? <laughs> um, I don't know how to answer that question because these realities are so new for us. So I, I'm not sure. Through you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> they, that? if they want to, if they want to peer into the 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 greenhouse city, they can. Absolutely. Get in touch with the Imperia. Yeah. Anybody, anybody's welcome to Alquipa. You got to. Sure. Uh, what are we What are we calling this? But we don't have a website. Oh, we got we to we make <laughs> up a title. We don't. Well done. Uh, we, we call this uh, Church is Music, Not Math. Or do we already do that one? Nope. We're okay. just not going to drop the word church, are we? Is this just, we just curse no, to we, carry this word. We'll just, let's just call it Music, Not Math. <laughs> there you go. We just dropped it. Music, Not Math. I'm, let's drop it permanently. Thank you. <laughs>